A child's proficiency at learning to read by age eight is a key indicator of their future success. It's when they stop learning to read and they start reading to learn. A poor reader at age eight is likely to remain a poor reader throughout school. They're four times more likely to leave school early. They're likely to end up unemployed in poverty and in poor health. Kofi Annan said, literacy is a bridge from misery to hope. And that's because learning to read can really change the trajectory of a child's life. And yet, there are 617 million children and adolescents in the world today that cannot read a simple sentence. And it's a global problem in both the developed and the developing world. In OECD countries, more than 10% of kids will not reach reading proficiency. So of those 617 kids in the developing world who are failing, over two-thirds of those are already in school. And in the OECD countries, it's almost 100% of those kids who are failing are already in school. So the education systems are failing these children. And why is that still happening? So I'm not an educator. But I'm a parent and I'm an engineer with 20 years experience and a PhD in speech recognition technology. So the literacy experts have recommended best practices to help close that gap. But the cost to implement in terms of reading resources are far beyond what most school systems can afford. So we contend that speech recognition technology is an effective solution to help bridge that gap. So how did I get interested in this? So six years ago, I was observing my daughter, Alicia, who was three at the time, and she was interacting with an iPad. And being the responsible and somewhat guilty parent, all the apps had to be educational. Um, and this one in particular was one for the very early stages of learning to read. And it came recommended by experts. So I was letting her play with it and she, over a few times, over a few days, and then I get an email update from the app creators to say that she completed seven levels. So suitably impressed, I, you know, quizzed her on the sounds she'd been learning, and, you know, she just looked at me, shrugged, and went, oh, I don't know. So the more I investigated, then I, I began to realize that actually what the app had done was teach her the sounds, and the only way it could assess her was play the sound it had been teaching her and give her multiple options from which to choose from. So what I realized was she was just guessing at these options. And when she didn't get it right, she just went through all the alternate options until she got the right one. And then she got a reward. So my three-year-old had completed seven levels, hadn't learned any of the sounds it was trying to teach her, but she had learned to hack the game. So being an engineer, I was suitably impressed with that skill. But then it dawned on me, um, I'd spent my whole career in the area of speech recognition technology, and what I was observing was that this reading app, or any digital reading app, was unable to assess her ability to recall and pronounce the sounds that had been teaching her. And they're the real components of learning to read. And what was missing was a speech recognition technology component that could invisibly and continuously assess her real reading progress. And that was my light bulb moment. But I'll get back to that in a minute. Because what I found fascinating at this point was, we actually teach kids to learn to read much like we teach computers to do speech recognition. We teach them that language is made up of these really small units of speech, and they learn those units, and then they, they thread them together to form words and then sentences. So for, as a speech recognition engineer, I found this fascinating. So I started delving more into, the, into it, and I found in the research that actually learning to read is a journey that spans from birth to age eight, where hopefully they've reached reading fluency. So I'd always imagined teaching my child to read, that I'd be sitting alongside her with a book and teaching her how to read right, with sentences. And what I was learning was the journey and the building blocks are actually start long before a child ever reads their first sentence. So the research shows that actually exposing babies and very young children to rich vocabulary and language is hugely beneficial to their reading development. 
And the next stage then is to teach the kids the oral skills, teach them the oral structure of language. And again, without any reference to the written words. And this is called phonological and phonemic awareness. And we teach kids that words are actually made up of sounds. So things like they learn about phonic sounds and syllables and alliteration and rhyming and blending and decoding. And they learn that the word monkey is actually made up of two syllables, monkey, like clapping games, right? And they learn that the word cat is actually made up of k, a, t, and three different sounds. Now, all that sounds really simple and obvious, but the research shows that there's a very strong relationship between these early literacy skills and their future reading success. So once they've gained these oral skills, they progress then on to associating those phonic sounds to the written representation. So each phonic sound is represented by a letter or a group of letters. So now, when they see the word cat written down, they see that the C is associated with a K, the A with the A, and the T with a T. So they go K, A, T, K, A, T, cat. So they could actually read the word cat having never seen that word before. So I'm oversimplifying the process of, of teaching a child to read via phonics, but you get the idea. And it's a really crucial step along the reading journey for a child. So then they progress to learning sentences and longer sentences, more complex sentences. And the last stage is learning to read, that they learn their fluency. And this is when they stop needing to decode each word and they start reading more effortlessly and with fluidity and they can extract meaning as they're speaking. Whereas a child that's less progressed will read slower and still word by word and it'll be choppy. So another thing I learned then was the value of practice. And this again sounds obvious because we all know the more you practice, the better you get at something. But the research shows that the single best approach to advance a child's reading progress is guided oral reading. So if you think about how you would help a child with their reading, you would sit alongside them, you would listen, you would prompt, correct, encourage, and all the while you'd be assessing, you'd realize the areas of weaknesses and strengths that they have, and you'd be assessing. And that's guided oral reading, and it requires a helpful adult. And at any stage along a child's reading journey, that individual regular practice is hugely beneficial for them. So lastly, I learned the value of screening and assessment. So all kids learn at a different rate. Some kids have gone to preschool, some haven't. But regardless, when they start school, they are all further along the reading journey and all at different stages. So screening on the way into school allows teachers to form a baseline for each kid as they go into school and many kids suffer from reading difficulties. So screening can also help identify the kids who are at risk of reading failure due to reading difficulties and dyslexia, and that can actually all happen before they ever even enter school. So while they're in school, regular assessment helps the teacher get the progress of each child and catch a child if they're, if they're at risk of they're struggling and they're falling behind their peers and they need to intervene and catch them up. So it takes four times longer to intervene with an eight or nine-year-old than it does a five-year-old. So early intervention is crucial for the child's reading success. So they're the best practices, right? We need to start early, individual regular practice, screen, assess, and intervene. But if we know all this, why are kids still failing at such a high rate? So if you think about a classroom situation, you could have a teacher with 30 kids in a class, and if they were just to spend 10 minutes with each child in the classroom, that would be the entire school day. And a teacher's time is probably the most valuable commodity within the classroom. Well, so while all these recommendations are well and good, and they're well-meaning, they're not practical to be able to implement in a busy classroom. Not without huge extra resources and budgets to allow extra trained professionals to help. But there is another way. We contend that the speech recognition can help deliver on these best practices within the classroom. But back in 2013, I was still trying to figure out why, with all the progress we'd made in speech recognition, did this technology not exist for kids? So my first realization was my whole career I'd been working in speech recognition, I'd actually be working in adult speech recognition. So I did more investigation and research and using my two kids as my research guinea pigs. And 
I began to identify the gaps and the issues. And the first was, yes, speech recognition worked really well for adults. And it worked very well for a very mature sounding older child. But the younger the child, the worse the performance. And the reason for this is a couple. So children are physically very different from adults. They have thinner, shorter vocal tracts. They have smaller vocal folds. And all that leads to higher pitched voices. Behaviorally, adults are very predictable and they follow you know, language rules where children are highly unpredictable and they follow, well, they rarely follow all the language rules. But they, you know, they shout, they whisper, they sing, they elongate, they overpronounce the words, they, they punctuate words as they speak. And all this really messes with the speech recognition system. Like kids just don't conform to what a speech recognition that has been designed for adults expects and needs. So as a result, the performance starts to deteriorate for children, and the younger the child, the worse the performance. So what I concluded was, what was missing, was high accuracy performance for young children. It was missing that we have that performance in homes and schools and real world noise environments. And there was a system that could, what was missing was a system that could accurately assess children at all stages along their, their learning, reading journey. So that includes phonic sounds, syllables, words, nonsense words, sentences, short choppy ones and more fluent ones, all the way up to fluency and comprehension. So in 2013, we set ourselves a mission to build a state-of-the-art speech recognition system for children that would help implement the recommended reading practices. So it had to work at high accuracy for children as young as three years old. And it had to work in those real-world noise environments like homes and schools. It had to work on modern smart devices and tablets without headset mics. And it had to work at all stages of the reading journey. And importantly, it had to be a cost-effective and scalable solution so we could have real global impact with this technology. So we'd set the bar really high for ourselves. We got together an amazing team of experts. We've spent years in research and development. And I'm happy to say we have a technology now that listens to kids and does practice assessment and screening just like a helpful adult can. So for the child's perspective, they're interacting with a fun reading game. The assessment component is invisible to them, but they get immediate feedback. We're not talking about spending the whole day on a, a screen, by the way. It, this is more like about um, 10 to 15 minutes of regular practice, right? But from the teacher's perspective, that regular practice gives them assessment feedback immediately. So when they do get that valuable one-to-one -one time with the child, they can better focus on what those child's needs are at that time. It can quickly help assess and screen and identify those kids who need intervention quickly so the teacher can intervene. And it can free up the teacher's time in the classroom so they don't have to spend the time doing the assessments and the screening and they can teach. We recently completed a school pilot that demonstrated the efficacy of our technology to accelerate kids' phonics learning in the classroom. We're now working with some of the world's leading early literacy experts and we're building innovations that can help advance and improve children's reading outcomes. And in the future, we hope that our technology can give information and previously unseen insights to these literacy experts about the child's leading journey that can lead to even further improved outcomes for kids. In 1963, JFK said, not all of us have equal talent, but all of us should have equal opportunity to develop those talents. And in the richest and poorest countries of the world today, children are still being denied that opportunity. Our goal is for speech recognition technology to help level the playing field and give all kids the chance to learn to read and unlock their full potential. So if this idea has resonated with you and, and you want to know what you can now do to help, please just share this idea with somebody that cares and help us make this a global reality. Thank you.